Hi everyone, welcome to my tutorial on how to burn videos to a CD or DVD so that it can be played on a DVD player or Blu-ray player and any computer. Now the program that I'm going to be using today is called DVD Flick. There are many other programs you can use for this process but this is my favourite. We're also going to need IMG Burn although we're not going to be using it directly it's just that DVD Flick needs that for the burning process as a secondary program. So let's begin by downloading DVD Flick by going to this website, the link is in the description box below, and then simply click the Download Now link just here. When the download appears at the bottom, click the Save button. It's 12.4 megabytes in size, takes about 50 seconds on my connection, so I'll just skip that along in this video. Once it's finished, simply click it to run the file and then click run if any security warnings appear. When the setup window appears click next, put a dot in the radio button to accept the agreement and then click next. The default location is fine unless you'd like to change it. Next, next. You can optionally choose to have a desktop icon of this program. Click next and finally install. Doesn't take long to install this program once again click next and then click finish next we need to download IMG Burn as the supporting program so go to this website once again the link is in the description box below click download now once it appears at the bottom click save this one's only 5.3 megabytes in size so it shouldn't take too long click the file to run it and then click run if any security warnings appear when the setup window appears, click Next. Put a tick in the checkbox to accept the agreement, and then Next. The full installation is chosen by default, and that will work fine. Next. And once again, the default location will be fine unless you'd like to change it. Click Next. Next again, and then the program will begin to install. When this notification appears, you can choose whether you'd like IMG Burn to periodically check for updates to its program. I'm going to click yes for this, but you haven't got to. When the installation finishes, their website will automatically load. You can just close that, go to your taskbar and open the setup again. Uncheck this box and then click finish. Now that we have both programs installed, we can close our internet browser and then double click the DVD flick shortcut that's been created. You can then close this welcome notification. Okay, the first thing we have to do is to add the videos that we want to burn to the CD. To do that, click the add title button in the top right. And then you must locate the video file that you want to add. Just like my previous video, I've got two videos placed in my videos to burn to CD folder. So I'm going to double click wildlife to add that title to DVD flick. Then I'm going to click the button again to choose my second video. You can do this for as many videos as you want as long as your CD has the capacity for it. Next go to menu settings at the top and you can select the menu that you'd like on the left here if you click it you get a small preview in the window here for an enlarged viewing you can also click the preview button like so so choose your favorite one from here I'm going to choose simple black and then click accept making sure that you have auto play menu checked next go to the project settings at the top and give your project a title. For the purposes of this video I'm going to call it Burning Test. The target size can stay the same and I would change the encoder priority to normal. Next go to the video tab on the left here and the target format here will depend on which country this DVD is mainly going to be played in. For most European, Asian, African and Oceanic countries this should be set to PAL as that's the most supported format for DVD and Blu-ray players. 
However, for America, the best format is NTSC. Some DVD players do support both formats nowadays, though. So I'm going to set this to PAL, and the rest of these settings can be kept the same, unless you'd like to tweak them. Next is the Audio tab. This can be kept the same, unless you specifically know that you want your video in a stereo or 5.1 surround sound. But I'm going to keep that on Auto. Next is the Playback tab where you can choose what should happen when a title finishes playing. If you've got more than one video on this DVD, then play the next title is almost always going to be your option. However, if you've only got one video, you can perhaps change this to play it again or simply stop playing. So I'm going to keep this on play the next title as I've got two videos. And optionally, you can have this checked, loop to first title when done playing last, so the whole DVD is on a kind of loop. Finally, the burning tab, put a tick in the checkbox next to burn project to disk and then give the disk a label which is what's going to appear in my computer and on the DVD player. Once again I'm going to call it burning test. If you have more than one CD drive make sure that correct one is selected here. If you only have one it will be selected by default of course. If you're using a rewritable disk like I am for this demonstration this should be ticked and then before you click the accept button now is the time to place your CD in your CD drive so I'll just do that now okay so the disk is now in my CD drive and I'm now going to click the accept button and then finally to start the burning process click the create DVD button at the top then click OK if any notifications like this one appear. It will then begin to encode. As you can see it does each video individually. This process does take quite a while altogether so I'll skip it along in this video. When it's finished encoding it will then begin to finalize the disk which involves burning the files to the disk. This is where IMG burn will automatically open. As you can see it's behind the window here. In my case, because I'm using a rewritable CD, you can see in the corner there it's erasing disk with the percentage at what point it's doing it. As you can see, it's now finished erasing the disk and it has now continued with the burning process. The length of this process will depend upon the length of the videos that you're burning to the CD and how many you are burning. The CD speed and the CD drive speed will also affect the length of this process. You can also see the time elapsed just here. I'll now skip this process along in this video. And nearing the end of the process it will synchronize the cache as you can see here. When the burning has finished it will go back to the DVD flick window automatically and you will see it says finished just here. You can then click the close button. You can then close DVD flick by clicking the cross in the corner. You haven't got to save the project as we've now burned it to the CD but if you want to edit it in the future you can save the project. I'm just going to click yes to exit though. You can then take the CD out of your CD drive and the videos on that CD can now be played on any DVD or Blu-ray player that supports that disc. In addition it can also be played back on any computer or laptop. Thanks for watching.